So my wife and I, because we're so in love with this baby, really need to be reminded that her existence is not Jesus Christ. She cannot take the place, as Keller reminds us, of the first commandment. Okay, she is not a god. Um, but we love her so much that the temptation is there to make her everything, that every moment is her. And babies need a lot of time and attention and love. But we can't elevate that kid to the point where it's the most significant thing in the world to everyone. Could be to us for a time, but not for everyone. And you know people, too, who turn their families into these little idols, and they want us to, you know, just always be kind of celebrating their family, and, and, you know, there's problems going on. I mean, it's great if you get to go away and go travel, and it's nice to maybe talk about it, but, you know, a lot of the rest of us, you know, are down here in the dirt, you know, digging it out, as Ben Hogan said. So anyway, the, I don't mean to sound envious, when I think about fleeing, it's fleeing from the things, whether it's sexual immorality, and the quote here is in, in Corinthians, when Corinth and this culture that become really idolatrous, sexually, etc., uh, drinking, um, whatever it is, uh, workaholism, perfectionism, look at the Keller book, he's got them all. But to me, the one I really thought about is a couple is um, being in a strip club, guys waste their lives away in a place, drinking, feeling miserable, looking at women that they'll never have a relationship with, and the women are literally, not just the lust, they are literally elevated. If there's no other, greater symbol of looking up and, and worshiping an idol than that, I don't know what is. It reminds me very much of Moses uh, and Aram when Moses went away and he created a golden calf and we're, and we're throwing our gold in and our riches in. I mean, it's, that's an idol, clearly. Um, the two that I think most people in your world, and maybe you struggle with, are leisure and work. That people are either working too much or they're, they're enjoying their leisure too much. They're building so much leisure into their life because they're afraid to work, because they love their comfort, etc. And that's why magazine articles are constantly written about work-life balance because nobody knows what it means. Another one would be athleticism. Like, hey, I was a great high school athlete and I can't stop talking about it. And it's been 30 years, but I have nothing else that I've built my life on since then, particularly in Christ. So I'm still worried about that. And certainly celebrity culture. If you watch a award show like I did the other night, um, that, that culture tends to keep making more and more idols. We make new people, new people that we celebrate, new people that we celebrate. And then when you give an award, you have to say they're the greatest person on earth. You can't be honest. You're there. This guy's a genius. Everybody's a genius. Um, if they were geniuses, they would, they would solve cancer and famine and everything. Um, anything, a person or a thing that is over-glorified and takes the place of God is an idol. And it says here, No temptation in Corinthians has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And then down in 14, Therefore, my friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. 1 Corinthians 14. Flee. Stick into the roadrunner. When Wiley e. Coyote comes, who can kill him and eat him? And he goes. He doesn't chill with him a little bit. He doesn't go, let's negotiate. He takes off. If you become aware of the things that, that hold you down, that are sinful, and the things that you've built into idols, flee from them. Flee from them. Don't hang around them or negotiate with them. Flee as the roadrunner flees. Thank you for watching this. I hope it helps your day. And I hope it helps your life. God bless you.